blinded, so we all have advantage now. Into the bloody fray. Uh, activate dash. Not getting very far. Critical seven. I hate that it, like, when I have two shots to do, I hate that it moves my camera after the first shot. So I can't just, like, hold the mouse in one place and go click, click. I have to, like, click and then, like, you know, find the, get, find the guy again. That seems silly. This would end much faster if I could get the moonbeam there. Oh, we're all pretty clumped up. Hope he doesn't have a grenade or something. That would be most unfortunate. Let's see, what have we got? Throw. Uh, what's something here actually made for throwing? We have a lot of weird weapons here. I don't think any of us is. Outflank. Outsmart. You can click their portrait to turn order. While true, you can do that. It sometimes will do stupid stuff. Like, you could already have line of sight to do a shot. You click their portrait, and they'll do a move, then get hit with an attack of opportunity, and then attack the target you click from a different angle. I've experienced that. Like, sometimes they're, they're just not satisfied with where they're standing. Throw the Gith Yankee Greatsword. Path is interrupted. What do you mean, interrupted? What? I guess because it, like, arches through over the ceiling. It's not gonna work. Okay. Closer. There we go. Now Spirit Guardians is working. Oh my god. Chat. I let that guy animate seven people. And I killed all of them. I took zero damage. No one on my team took damage. When I did this fight on my first playthrough, it was a problem. Like, Carlock got teleported or thrown down into the pit. She was fighting for her life. I was trying to get her out. We had to revive people like 20 times. Like, it was a problem. This was, this was whatever. Uh, pick up this body. Let's stock up. I think uh, turning off dynamic combat camera should help with that. Dynamic combat camera. I think we tried that. 
When enabled, the camera follows the character whose turn it is during combat or turn it is. Turn. No, I think we did we did try turning that off once, and all that did was like if someone's moving, it will follow them with the camera. It didn't have any effect on like when you shoot a bow and then it follows the arrow and stuff like that. What the heck? Oh, there's two more that never joined in. Hi. Uh, where's my spirit guardians? Spirit guardians... ...doesn't run out. It keeps going as long as you're concentrating. I don't know why it stopped. I am confusion. I'm ready. I don't want to use another moonbeam on this. I don't think it's necessary. You have my attention. Mm. I applaud your taste. Said you lost concentration for some reason when you were messing with the bodies. Odd. Undead archer. A rough tempest I will raise. all cantrips so I didn't have to uh, recharge anything. That's weird that I lost concentration over there. There's not like um there wasn't like grease or anything over there. I'm not sure why that happened. Oh Gale is over encumbered. Might have uh, put too many bodies in his bag. Yeah, Chip is here. Currently a loaf. Creatures live in waters this dark. Camp supplies. Gold. Blood smeared logbook. A ledger detailing the appearance and quality of numerous gemstones that had been mined from rock. Weight, color, clarity, and more are noted next to a sketch of each stone. An underlined entry for a sizable ruby is written in shaky, excited quill strokes. Water damage letter. A water damage letter imploring the recipient to be cautious around the far shore of the Ebon Lake as Dwerger are rumored to be prowling in the area. Well. Alright, so we got this uh, waypoint, and we know the boat goes to like a new area. I'm not ready to go do that yet. <coughs> Did you get the quest for the mushroom people? No, I have not encountered them yet in this playthrough. 
Spattered Diary. Badly charred diary with property of Wolbrin written on the inside cover. In one of the few legible entries, the author wonders if he'll ever see his friend Barkus again now that he's departed for the surface world. right there. Boots, half eaten apple. All right. Okay. Let's go back here. What's that? Wait, 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 wait. Well stitched satchel. Wow, 196 gold. Cool. Didn't perception that last time through. You use the special arrows, yes. Um, on fights that are challenging, I use them. So, I mean, you could honestly say I hoard them 90% of the time, and then on the fights that are tough, I go crazy with them. Like, oh god, I need more damage. Acid arrow, poison arrow, flaming arrow. Executed Deep Gnome. Short Sword of First Blood. Swarming Toad Sword. Fungal Spores. Myconids nearby. Myconids? playing shadow heart right now tell me i'm not imagining that i can't <laughs> that was almost dennis tell me i'm not imagining that voice no someone's coming and someone else wants us to know they are coming you are coming i mean not yet Corpses. these creatures did battle with Dwergar. Tap quick save. Time to press ahead. Be careful. Even the mushrooms down there don't be trusted. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Question, is that gonna fade away? Yes, it will. Okay. Okay. Hello, you know. Creature sing many voices. 
the harmony of an entire collective. Sovereign, he has come. He is here. The choir fades. A single melody rises above the others, brassy and commanding. I am Sovereign. You see a vision. Your lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. The Sovereign is threatening you. State your purpose. <laughs> F5. My purpose is private. Let me pass and I will leave you unharmed. <laughs> Fungal roots weave through your mind, seeking your true intent. Then the Sovereign drones a new melody, cautious but welcoming. Descend to me. Let us speak in flesh. The persistent music coaxes you forward. The Sovereign expects you. He's dead, but if I loot him, they're gonna get mad. Merchant, I need to sell stuff. Ah, a visitor. You're a welcome sight. But let us observe the customs of the locals. The scholar's brow tenses. His voice spills into your skull, the spores connecting but mind loot. to mind. Blurg, proud member of the Society of Brilliance at your service. Or perhaps not. Your mind is far more complex than that of the fungi. I've never heard of the Society of Brilliance. Understandable. We are small in number and rarely stay in one place for long. My colleagues and I are working to improve conditions in the Underdark. This need not be such a dire, hostile place. It's curious to find a surface dweller here. What has brought you down so deep? A mind flayer infected me with a tadpole. Truly remarkable. But why come to the Underdark, where they hold so much power? Explain the whole story. You were infected by an illithid tadpole? It's a miracle you're still intact. You must be worried sick, but have no fear. I have a friend who may be able to assist. Did you do this route? Uh, I hope this is. I did talk to this guy, if that's what you're asking. My Zerkwood samples need constant attention. It is. This adventurer has an illithid tadpole inside his head, but he hasn't turned. No ceramorphosis. That's impossible, but intriguing. Are you looking to have it extracted? And Illithid is your friend. How is this possible? I have broken free from the Elder Brain's yoke. I no longer serve the Grand Design. I ask that you refrain from violence, while I respect that your opinion of my kind may not change. What is the grand design? A collective quest to eliminate the Gith and enslave all other humanoids. If that settles matters for the time being, would you like a diagnosis? Open your mind to me. Let us see what lurks within. Relax and let Omelum's mind search your own. 
As the Meloan's mind pierces yours, the tadpole pulses with power. It feels ten times its size. Alive. Awake. Almost smug. This is most unusual. The incubation period should be complete, as should your transformation. But the lava is infused with strange magic. It appears to be in some form of stasis. Can you extract the tadpole? No. It appears to be shielded from physical and magical influence. Moreover, the cranium has undergone severe trauma. It is a miracle the brain functions at all. Extraction would risk much. Cleric. How severe? I have healing magic. I intend no disrespect. But one can only heal so much of their own brain tissue. But not to worry. Should you transform, I will happily perform a new examination. I have an idea, but I want to get out of this conversation because this is really loud. So all that probing was useless in the end. My apologies. I hoped the experience was not too unpleasant. But I have an idea. Noises. Oh, perhaps I should start taking notes. There may be a way to bypass that stasis. There are many alchemical substances that can influence the mind. Is it the stasis why the tadpole hasn't killed me yet? I do not intend to shatter its protection. I need only bypass the interference that prevents me from communicating with the lava. What kind of alchemy are we talking about? A tincture distilled from a collection of rare mushrooms. They have subtle psionic influence. I would require a fresh ton of madness and timusk spores. But be warned, in their natural state, I think I have both of those already. Both of these mushrooms can be quite dangerous. Timusks cause confusion in those that approach them. The tongue is self-explanatory. Okay, so uh, earlier I asked chat, I was like, what's the difference between a scroll of revivify and a scroll of true resurrection? Because we had a quest where we used a scroll of true resurrection on uh, Gale. And someone in the chat said, Scroll of Resurrection, you don't need the whole body. You can just have, like, a piece of it and bring him back. Which got me thinking, what if we killed one of our party members and then cut open their head and, like, rip the worm out and then cast Revivify on them to bring them back? Would that bring them back without the worm? And if not, if the Revivify doesn't work, surely the, the True Resurrection Scroll would work for at least Gale. That would get him no worm. Uh, let's see. I think I already have what you're looking for. These are fine specimens. It will only take me a moment to brew them to proper potency. Omelion turns away to prepare the potion. Lost in its own musings. You must drink the entire draft. I can make no promises as to its taste. I think you're trying to game the game too much on that one, but I like the initiative, we should try it. Well, I don't think it gives you the option. But I'm just saying, theoretically, by D&D &D rules, I'm wondering if that would work or not. Uh, what exactly is this going to do to me? It will lower the psionic defenses around the lava. If I cannot remove it, I may still be able to tell you more about its origin. Omeloan watches you with cautious intensity. 
It expects doubt. It expects fear. Why aren't you telling me? Is this dangerous? Only in that you may be a danger to yourself. What the potion may make you see or feel, I cannot determine. But unless you are already a step from death, it will not kill you. Drink. The potion is disgusting beyond description. The only mercy is that it goes down quickly. Not a drop left. Very good. As the potion influences your mind, you may find yourself acting irrationally. Try and stay focused. The world loses its edges, its finer boundaries. You are fluid. But trapped like a creature suspended in amber. Um. Draw on your willpower and resist. No cunning. Resistance. Whoa. Dark holes bite at the edges of your vision, but the void cannot draw you in. The tackle spasms, it seizes. It's fighting the potion even harder than you are. Fear pierces your mind like knives of ice. The parasite digs deeper, as if it means to hollow out your skull. Cleric saving throw. Tiamat, your favorite cleric in the whole wide world, calls upon your aid. Tiamat provides. The cold blades lose their edge. You are stalwart, turning that tide of fear against itself. The parasite swells with power. More power than you have ever felt before. It surges and twists, lashing out against that which would dare to intrude. The parasite in your mind quiets, pleased with itself. Omeluum, are you well? That lava is like nothing I have ever observed before. Its power is unsettling. F5. <laughs> You're supposed to make it weaker, not stronger. You have my deepest apologies. The lava did not care for my intentions. Ah. <sighs> What's next? Cut off my head? Such crude destruction may not waylay a lava like this. Oh, great, I would but still change. There is another possibility. I possess a ring of mind shielding. It prevents elder brains from noticing my presence. Is that it the Emperor? No. Different one. Lava, but it will limit its influence, both positive and negative. I would offer it as a gift, but in truth, the ring is priceless. Is there anything you could offer me in turn? Why didn't you mention the ring before? Because removal seemed preferable to negation, and I must admit, I was curious to study the tadpole myself. Hmm. What's more evil, just saying I want power, keep the ring, or demand the ring? Uh. Hmm. My precious. 